Today, I'm going to explain a 2018 American action movie called Aquaman. The movie starts on a very stormy night in 1985. Thomas Curry the lighthouse keeper discovers an unconscious wounded woman on the shore, he saves her and brings her to his house. When she woke up she was still in shock and directly attacked him. Then she saw a TV in the other room and smashed it with her trident, then lost consciousness. The next day, she woke up to find out that Thomas has already healed her wounds, after that she saw a fish and eat it. At this moment Thomas comes in and introduces himself to her, where she reveals that her name is ATL Anna, the Queen of Atlantis, and the two begin to like each other. Thomas and ATL Anna spend the next few years together, and they become parents to a son, named Arthur. Everything seems lovely until one day a team of Atlantean soldiers burst into Atlanashome with the intention of taking her back under the order of King Orvax. ATL Anna fights back and manages to beat all soldiers down. Then she informs Thomas that she must return to Atlantis otherwise. The king will send more soldiers, but before leaving she gives him Trident to give it to Arthur when he grows up and promise him of coming back one day. Then she jumps back into the ocean. Few years later, we see Arthur as a child in a school field trip to the Boston Aquarium. He is seen talking to the fish, and two bullies start to taunt and mock him for it. A shark then starts banging on the glass, cracking it slightly and scaring everyone else. Arthur puts his hand on the glass, and suddenly the shark calms down. All the people there watch in astonishment as all the sea creatures gather right behind Arthur, and his eyes glow yellow. Twenty years later, a team of pirates led by Jesse Kane and his son David takes over a Russian submarine, after subduing the men on board. The pirates discover that something collided with them, it reveals to be Arthur who is now an adult known by many as Aquaman. He pushed the submarine out of the surface, then makes his way inside it and starts fighting the pirates, and Manigesto beat them all. And at this moment David joins the battle and starts fighting Arthur who gets the upper hand. Before finishing David, Jesse interferes and fires an RPG at Arthur, Jesse thought A killed him, but Arthur picks himself up, completely unscratched. Then he retaliates by piercing Jesse in the shoulder with a steel pipe, while leaving Jesse tries to shoot Arthur but he missed him and made a hole in the submarine and the water started to seep in, he also jays pinned under a torpedo. David desperately tries to free his father on pleads for Arthur's help, but he refused to save him saying you both killed innocent people, David continues trying to free his father who knows that his time is almost up, and pulls out a grenade before ordering David to get out and take his revenge by killing Arthur. David climbs out of the submarine as he hears his father set off the grenade, he gets away in another submarine while Arthur rescues the other Russian crewmen. After that, he joins his father who is waiting on the docks for ATL Anna as he usually did during the past years. The two went to a bar where they see a news report of Aquaman's heroics, Thomas knows it was Arthur. He feels proud of his son and reminds him how he is meant to unite both surface world and the kingdom of Atlantis. Then a group of bikers approaches Arthur, seemingly looking for a fight, but they actually just want to take pictures with him, down in Atlantis. Arthur's half-brother Ormus with Arthur's mentor Nuitus Vulco as they prepare to meet with King Near Use of Zebel, Orm wants Near Use to form an alliance with him in a supposed effort to unite the other kingdoms of the sea, but Orm really wants an excuse to attack the surface world. Believing they will strike upon Atlantis first, Near Use is also aware of Arthur's existence, but Orm refuses to acknowledge his half-brother or that his mother lived among the surface dwellers. At this moment a blast hits the area, and a submarine comes in for an attack. Orm and Near Use round up their forces to strike back, and Orm manages to send the submarine crashing to the lowest depths of the ocean. Near Use is then convinced to side with him as they prepare to send a message to the surface. Later on that night, while Arthur and his father were leaving the bar, Princess Mara, the daughter of Near Use approach him and warns him that Orm is planning to wage war on the surface and billions of people will die on both sides, Arthur doesn't seem interested. Even as Mera tells him that Vulco has found a path to the long lost trident of Atlan, which can be used to defeat Orm and allow him to claim as Placia's king of Atlantis, but Arthur refuse and said, if Orm attacks, I will treat him exactly the same way your people treated my mother, with no mercy. Meanwhile, in the North Sea Orm and his commandos meet with David. He hands him a bag full of gold coins, but David said I don't need your money, I want Aquaman, and from here we realize that Orm was Theon who hired David and his father to stealth submarine to use it as an excuse to attack surface. In the meantime, a massive tidal wave heads toward the mainland, as Arthur was driving his father home, he tries to avoid it by driving fast but it strikes their truck and pulls him out, he swims back looking for his father, Bute couldn't find him, suddenly Mara show up and help him. She was able to get Thomas out of the water and help him to breathe after pulling the water off his body. Then they all look at the shore where we can see all the warships and submarines crush there. Mara tells Arthur this is just the start. At this moment Arthur accepts to join Hardo Stop Orm. The two head toward a cliffside to dive into the ocean. The same place where Vulco taught Arthur how to swim and master his Atlantean instincts. Arthur and Mara jump to the ocean then ride her watercraft. Mara shows him Atlantis for the first time then she took him to a sunken ship to meet Vulco 
who tells Arthur that the legend of Atlantstriden is real, it belonged to the founding king Atlan and it was forged from powerful steel, designed to allow someone worthy to rule over Atlantis. After that, he tells him the story of Atlantis the city that prospered on the surface and made impressive technological advancements, but their drive for power ultimately brought their downfall, and Atlantis sunk to the bottom of the ocean. However, their advancements also helped Atlanteans to evolve and breathe underwater, while others regressed and mutated into monstrosities. Then Atlan spends the rest of his life in exile. Vulco provides Arthur and Mera with a cylinder to find the final resting place of Atlan. Just before they are attacked by soldiers, Mera and Vulco escape while Arthur fights them and manage to beat some soldiers. Butte another more powerful group led by Merc arrives and captures Arthur. Arthur is brought before Orm where he meets his brother for the first time. Orm thinks that his mother was executed for bearing a child from the surface and blames Arthur for her death. He also explains his position and hatred for the surface world due to the harm that they have inflicted upon the oceans. Then he offers to let Arthur leave and never return. But Arthur challenges him to a duel. Despite objections from Vulco and Mera, Orm accepts. Arthur gears up for the duel, wielding his mother's trident. Meanwhile, Orm gives to his betrothed Mera a bracelet that he says belonged to his mother Atlana. On the other side, Vulco asks Arthur if he remembers all what he taught him. Then a flashback shows Vulco training him to properly use his mother's trident. Then show him a move that creates a type of water shield. Young Arthur believed that Atlana abandoned him because she didn't love him or his father. But Vulco told him that she was executed by being fed to the creature of the trench. In the present, Arthur heads to the Ring of Fire where the duel starts in front of a crowd of people, most of whom have sided with Orm, and calls Arthur a traitor. Arthur puts on a respectable display of force against Orm who attempts to drag him down into the lava to kill him. But Arthur escapes. Then Orm uses his trident to destroy Arthur's trident. Mera intervenes and takes Arthur out of the arena before Orm can strike a fatal blow. The two escape in her watercraft. Orm and his men follow them and shot down their ship. But Arthur and Mera escape, and Orm believes that they were killed. But the two hide in the mouth of a whale that Arthur summons so that it can take them somewhere safe above the surface. After that, Orm finds out that Mera is still alive and knows her location. With the bracelet, gives it to her earlier. He orders his commandos to find them and kill them. But Nereus forces Orm to ensure that Mera is brought back safely otherwise he will no longer support him. Orm then goes to contact David and allows him to lead the commandos to find Arthur and Mera, and he equips him with Atlantean weaponry to ensure that David will be able to kill Arthur and Mera. David does some personal tweaking to the weapons and suits to his own liking. Meanwhile, Arthur and Mera board a plane to take them to the desert, and they jump out with no parachutes. Mera tells Arthur that the desert was once covered by the ocean and they walk until they fall down a hole that brings them to an old temple where Atlan's trident was forged. Mera places the cylinder down on a round platform, but nothing happens until she realizes it must be activated with water. After doing so, it activates a holographic message from Atlan with instructions on how to locate the trident. Arthur then finds a bottle with a map inside a thought tells them their next stop is in Sicily, Italy, on the other side. Orm meets with the fisherman king in an attempt to get him to join forces, but the king refuses, and Orm kills him in front of his wife and daughter. Then he orders them to prepare the army forward and wait for his orders. At this moment, Arthur and Mera arrive in Sicily, where they briefly indulge in the activities among the surface dwellers. Arthur gives red flowers to Mera, who thought it is food and he ate it. Then they find a spot among the statues of past leaders. Arthur figures it out by putting the bottle in the hand of the statue of Romulus, according to Atlan's message. When placed there, Arthur and Mera see the direction of the trident's location. At this moment, David, who is now calling himself Black Manta, comes with his commandos and attacks them. He fires a laser from his helmet at Arthur. Mera takes on the commandos while Arthur fights Black Manta. She kills off a few and finishes the Reese Bee manipulating red wine and using it as a weapon to kill them. Arthur manages to send Black Manta flying and accidentally blasting himself with his own laser before he falls into the ocean. Then Mera rushes to help Arthur and at this moment she realized how Orm was able to track them. After that, she treats Arthur's wounds and the two sail to the trench. He tells her how he feels responsible for David becoming his enemy after refusing to save his father. Arthur said he is not worthy to be a leader nor a king, but Mera assures him he is wrong and that he is the bridge between man and the sea. Back in Atlantis, Orm is planning his invasion off the surface with his newly united tribes. He finds out that Vulco was working against him and he orders his men to imprison Vulco. As they sail through a storm, Arthur and Mera are attacked by the hideous creatures of the trench. They fight back. But a huge horde appears and destroy the ship, forcing them to jump in the water. Just when it looks like they are doomed, they are pulled out of harm's way by a mysterious being who takes them deep into the trench and up into a tropical chamber with breathable air. It reveals to be Atlana, Arthur and Bracey's mother, for the first time in years. He also tells her how Thomas has been waiting for her to return after all this time. Atlana tells Arthur and Mera how she escaped her execution and has been stranded in an uncharted sea. 
She points out to Arthur that the Trident is located behind a nearby waterfall, and only the one true king may enter and come out with the Trident. Arthur enters and sees the Trident glowing on a dais. He suddenly comes face to face with Karaten, a gigantic monster that guards the Trident. Arthur tries to take the Trident but the Kraithan hits him. Then he uses his powers to communicate it with her, something that only Atlan was also able to do. The Karaten asks Arthur what makes him worthy of wielding the Trident, he says he is not worthy, and that he only wants to save both worlds. The Karaten is convinced and allows Arthur to take the Trident from Atlan's skeleton, giving him greater power and a new suit off gold and green. Going back to Atlantis, Orm is now calling himself the Ocean Master, and his forces gather to launch their attack on the surface. A climactic battle begins as Arthur and Mera lead their own forces of sea creatures, including Karaten, to fight back and subdue Orm's army. The creatures take out Orm's men, letting Tay other Atlanteans to renounce their loyalty to him. Orm then fights Arthur once again. Only this time, Arthur forces Orm to the surface to fight on his own turf. Arthur utilizes the Trident's power to his advantage then by using Vulko's move he manages to beat Orm and shatters his Trident, leaving him on his knees. Arthur decides to spare Orm's life. Even Ash demands to be killed. In the meantime, ATLN arises from the Oceanto greet Orm and the two embrace. Vulko orders the commandos to arrest Orm, and he goes willingly, Arthur tells Orm that he is willing to talk to him when he is ready. The Atlanteans then accept Arthur as their new king. Going back to the lighthouse Thomas was going to the docks once again, just to be surprised it'd be ATL Anna who finally returned to him. In the last scene of the movie David is shown to be alive, and he is found by Stephen Shin, a conspiracy theorist obsessed with Atlantis and Aquaman. When David wakes up, he finds Stephen checking out the Atlantean weapon, David offers to show him how it works if it helps him to find a way to kill Aquaman. Subscribe to watch more videos like this and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.